How's day two going? You guys are almost done. There's me and a keynote, and then you get to go to Bourbon Street. It's very exciting. Um, so we're here to talk about logout. Um, I'm going to talk for a little while, and then I'm sure that you all have your own logout stories that I really want to hear. So there's a mic in the middle. Um, think about what you want to say, and we'll have a piece of this where, where I get to hear from you, because I'm kind of excited about that. So I'm Sarah Squire. I'm Sarah K. Squire on Twitter, if you want to tweet at me. I'm a senior identity solution architect at Engage Identity, which sounds fancy, but I own Engage Identity. It's called Engage Identity because I have an unhealthy obsession with Captain Picard. Uh, so I'm really just an independent consultant. Um, I do consulting, training, and software development for identity-based information security protocols like OAuth. And uh, my most recent experience with Logout has been uh, the NIST rewrite of 863. That's the special publication for federal authentication guidelines. So I'm a co-author on that along with uh, Paul Grassi, Jim Fenton, and Justin Richer. So we've been getting deep in the weeds of federation and session management and all that fun stuff. So I wanted to talk to you today about Logout because it's one of those features that behaves differently in different circumstances. And so it's become something that completely baffles users and causes systems to do possibly very insecure and unexpected things. And when we're talking about information security, unexpected session management behavior is a huge deal. Users cannot behave in a way that preserves their security and privacy if we are building systems that don't behave in ways that users expect. So we're gonna go on a journey today, you and me, and we're gonna explore this topic. We're gonna do it in four parts. So first, I'm going to give you a little history lesson in authentication and session management so we can figure out where users got the expectations that they have now and how authentication systems have adapted to user expectations. Then there will be an exciting interactive portion where you will get to raise your hands and make noise and you will find out that you're wrong about a lot of things because guess what? You're users too. And you have expectations and those expectations are wrong. Um, they're very wrong, we'll all be wrong together, it'll bond us, it'll be great. So then we'll get to the part where I will make you feel guilty because my mother was Catholic and that's just what women in my family do. And then we'll talk about solutions. So first we're gonna talk about history. So when the web first started, it was a read-only publishing platform. So I can write something on my website, you can write something back on your website, but we can't log into each other's websites. We can't have sessions, we can't leave trails of personal information behind or execute any sensitive transactions or even any transactions at all. We can read. Well, that sucks, right? I want my web 2.0 customized experience. I want my name at the top of your site every time I come by. So the spec for HTTP 1.0 included basic authentication. It was magical. I can send a username and password in clear text over the network. <laughs> And you will know that it's me at the other end. It's so exciting. We live in the future. It's awesome. So now we have sessions. So there's my name. This is great. We'll just tell all the users that they have to close their browser and their personal information will be safe from the next person to use the device. We started campaigns. Do you remember the 90s? Yes, close your browser, stay secure, except that every time I close my browser, you forget all about me. And then I have to remember which password I used and type it in again and again every time I come to your site. This is terrible. I was so excited a minute ago. Wait. Then we got an idea. You know how we said that a session was for as long as the user has a site open in the browser? Well, that's pissing off the user. So let's just redefine the word session. Let's make a session be until the user actively logs out. And until then, just keep those session cookies around and let them right in the front door, plaster their name on the site, put their customizations all over. So great, now they don't have to remember their passwords anymore. Maybe there's an edge case where they want to log out. They can use incognito mode, it'll be fine. So we ended up with things like this. Warning, protect your privacy, prevent unauthorized use, completely exit your web browser when you're finished. This is the University of Washington login page. I get to shit on the University of Washington because I worked there for five years. <laughs> they actually have a great identity team. But this is still on their website. Do you know what happens when users close their browser? Their privacy isn't protected. They don't actually log out. They're still logged into the IDP. So this is a big problem. 
so now we get to the exciting interactive portion where you get to be wrong about things. Yes. OK, so let's start with something super easy. What happens when we log into Google? So remember this box on the right. So this is what Google looks like before you log in. Gray person icon, empty box, requesting an email. So on the left, I'm logged in. So I'm Sarah at Engage Identity. See the little gray button in the bottom on the right? Let's talk about what happens when I push that button. Will I still be logged in or will I be logged out? So raise your hand if you think I will still be logged in. There will be no change. <laughs> They're hedging your bets, I know. OK, raise your hand if you think I'll log out and I'll go back to where I was on the left. OK. You're all wrong. Here's what actually happened. So does this count as being logged out? What does logged out actually mean? What do users expect to happen? Is it just a re-authentication event? That's fine if two things are true, right? One, I'm sharing this computer with someone I know. And two, I don't mind them knowing that I was logged into this site at some point. But what if those things aren't true? That means that my privacy has been violated and I don't even have a way to fix it. There's no button on this page that says, forget me, that says, actually log me all the way out, don't just force re-authentication. So this is a huge information security problem for our industry. How do we differentiate between forget me and make me re-authenticate if I show up again? Because some users mean the former and some mean the latter, but all we can use to communicate that is one button that says sign out. And this is the easy case. <laughs> We're already running into huge problems. So what happens when the identity provider I'm logging into is different from the application I'm using? So just to be clear, when I say identity provider or IDP, I mean the place where the user is entering their authentication credentials. When I say relying party or RP, I'm talking about the application they're using. So let's do this. So for this example, I'm going to use Fitbit, which I am owning at this week, by the way, because I've walked to Frenchman Street like five times. My mother is always ahead of me on Fitbit. She has 85,000 steps this week. I have 92. <laughs> awesome. Uh, sorry. So um, I'm logged in with Google. Sarah at Engage Identity. So I should just be able to click that link, log in with Google, and be logged in. Great. Lovely. So now, if I want to log out, if I don't want the next person using this device to see my weight, my BMI, my exercise habits, I click the gear, I click the log out link. So this is your chance to redeem yourselves, audience. Let's see what you, information security experts, think is going to happen. So make some noise if you think we'll go back to the original login with Google page. Nobody? You're smart. Uh, make some noise if you think that nothing happens and we will just stay logged in and come right back to this page again. No? None of you think either of those things is going to happen? Because I tricked you before. No? Yeah, OK, I get it. Here's what happens. I'm logged out, right? I have a green check mark in a green box. There's no picture of my face. It says, you have logged out successfully. Obviously, Fitbit has forgotten me entirely. The next person to use this computer will have no idea who I am, what my personal information is. Great job at logout. Let me just refresh this page to make extra double sure that I'm logged out. I'm not logged out. Yeah. See, this time you would have both been right. <laughs> we went back to the login with Google page, and yet we were not logged out. So just to be clear, I didn't click login with Google there. I just refreshed the page. And this is unexpected behavior for all users. This should not be happening. This is a security system that's behaving in an unexpected way. This is a usability nightmare. It is a personal data security nightmare. And this is not the only example. Most relying parties work this way. So we are information security professionals, right? We can log out of Fitbit. 
Who, what should we do next? How do we get out? Log out of Google, okay. Let's try logging out of Google. Let's see what happens. So I logged out of Google. So this is my Google.com page now. It says sign in, it doesn't say Sarah. So if we go back to Fitbit, we are still logged in. So Fitbit got its authentication event already. It doesn't check back with Google to see if I still have a valid session. That would be extremely expensive for it to do. So now I saw someone say, log out of Fitbit too. Let's try that. Interesting, right? It didn't forget me, but it is requesting a reauthentication. So at least the next person to use this device won't have access to my account. So for the record, in order to accomplish this, we had to visit two sites, log out of them, and make sure we did them in the correct order. This is too much to ask of users. It's much too much, we need to fix this. Why did we make this so hard? So now we've come to the part where I make you feel guilty. Remember Andre's keynote yesterday about trust? He specifically talked about logout. He said, can we trust users to log out and not leave a trail of open sessions behind them? I think that we've made it extremely difficult for users. Given what we just went through, can we honestly say that it's on the user to log out? That they are breaching our trust in them if they don't? I don't think we can say that. So how many of you have user experience people in your companies? Raise your hands. Thank you. And how many of you do in-home user experiences with entire families, not just one person? Yeah, nobody does that. Every person in this room probably has three devices that they use exclusively and don't share with their grandmother or their creepy uncle or their niece or their nephew. Lots of American households share a computer. So I wanna see if you know what percentage of households share one computer. So this is data from the 2010 census. So think of a number, what percentage do you think it is? And raise your hand if the percentage in your head is less than 100%. Okay, good, you're, you're still awake, I'm glad. Okay, keep your hand up if it's less than 90, less than 80, less than 70, less than 60, less than 50, less than 40, still got one up, less than 30? <laughs> okay, good. So the question they asked was, do you have multiple PCs? 48% of households said yes, which means that 52% of households do not have multiple PCs. They share one computer. There are 2.58 people on average in a household in America. And it never occurred to us to develop with these people in mind, with the majority of computer owning Americans in mind. We developed for ourselves. Do you have the field ads now? <laughs> okay, good, that's what I was going for. Okay, so things are broken, how are we going to fix this? So there are two fundamental problems here, right? One is that we have conflated erase my history with make me reauthenticate. We talked about that already. The other is that users don't actually know what it means to log out of a single sign-on system. And the kicker here is that they think that they do. So when I presented users with the ability to log out of a relying party and ask them if they thought that they would be logged out of their IDP, about half said yes and about half said no. And when I asked them how sure they were about that conclusion, almost all of them said that they were very sure. They have firm expectations about the experience they're gonna have, but those expectations are not consistent. And as a system architect, I genuinely do not know what to do with that. If they all thought that logging out of an RP should log them out of their IDP, that would be easy. That's a technical problem that we can build a spec for and we can implement systems that do that. And so that's why I want us, the Identorati, to have a conversation about this. The people at this conference have solved a lot of difficult problems and I think we need to talk about this problem. Now if we look at the other case, user logs out of IDP, 
that's much more clear. Most users expect that logging out of the IDP will log them out of all of the relying parties. It's not what usually happens, <laughs> but it is what they expect, and that's what we have to shoot for. So for that particular use case, what options do we have? Well, we have two choices really, right? We can go through the browser and do a front channel logout, or we can go through the back end and do an API based uh, back channel logout. So there are standards implementing these today. OpenID Connect, for example, uses a front end model to load all the RPs it has a valid token for and log them out. Um, SAML does this through Shibboleth somewhat, it tries to. Um, a colleague of mine from University of Washington, when he heard I was giving this talk, said, oh, don't forget to tell them that when we were trying to implement shibboleth logout, we put a support page up on the wiki, and at the top of the support page, there's a disclaimer that says, this is not a recipe for implementing single logout in shibboleth. This is a warning to anyone who thinks they understand it. So there are also new standards being built. Um, RISC, the Shared Signals Working Group in the OpenID Foundation um, is talking about these use cases. The ID event discussion list at the IETF is talking about these use cases. And I was so excited to hear about distributed sessions uh, yesterday and today. So uh, I'm looking forward to learning more about that. That might be a way to solve this as well. So what I really want is for you guys to join these conversations, start these conversations, and we need to try and get a handle on these problems. So that's the extent of my remarks. I want to invite you guys to come to the microphone in the middle of the room and share some of your logout stories because I'm really excited to hear them. Who's going to be first? I know you guys have terrible logout nightmares. I know you do. Okay, go to the microphone. Outlook web access client, and it logs me out as I'm responding to an email. <laughs> That's very secure. <laughs> <laughs> it's continuous authentication. They realize that you're a different person every moment of your life. That's hilarious. So I worked on a system a number of years ago wherein uh, we were using a federated login system that was backed by a uh, company-wide SSO, which meant that it took the whole logout problem that you were talking about and actually pushed that a step further because, as it turned out, you could log out of the wiki, which was the RP system downstream. Wonderful, kill that session, except you go back to the wiki and you are automatically signed in right. because you were still signed into the IDP. That's great. Let's go kill the session at the IDP and the session at the wiki. That's wonderful. We go there, we go back to the wiki, and you're automatically logged in because you're still logged into the domain. And it's the domain that bootstraps the uh, login to the IDP, which bootstraps the login to the wiki because <laughs> the requirement of the entire system was, well, when I go to the wiki, I don't want to have to log in. I just, I just want it to work. I just want it to be there except when I want to be logged out, because then obviously I don't want it to be logged in at the whole time. And I kid you not, there were months of meetings of trying to explain to people that these are two very, very incompatible requirements. But people thought that this is, uh, the people that were running the, uh, the Wikifarm system in this case, really, like you were saying, they adamantly had a mental model of this should work this particular way. When I click the logout button, oh, I don't want single sign-on anymore. But if I haven't clicked the logout button, whatever that means, then I absolutely want single sign-on and don't bother me, don't prompt me. I don't, th uh, this was the same group that incidentally uh, wanted us to change our uh, IDP approval page so that it didn't even mention that users were going through the IDP because they were very focused on branding. They wanted to hide the fact that they were even using an IDP, but they absolutely wanted to have uh, single sign-on capabilities. Nice. And it's the, it was the most convoluted session management thing I've ever tried to untangle. And at the end of the day, we just said, you can't do it. <laughs> You're just not allowed to log out. Yeah. Yeah. It's one way to do it. Yeah, I definitely had a similar um, st um, situation like you uh, you mentioned it, it makes e things even worse is when you log into some some uh, system like for example Amazon um, you actually have uh, two session right and you, you probably when you log into the front page of Amazon you actually have your name on uh, the front page but but if you make a purchase then it will go to another it'll re-authenticate right yeah. so there's a 
it's quite a confusing a lot of time. Like when I log out from Amazon and I refresh the page and I still see my name on it, but if I want to make a purchase, it says that I need to log in again. But I was wondering, uh, have you in, in, in your experiment of this Fitbit, have you tried to just like um, close the browser tab or window, whatever? Because in, in most of my case, I just turn on, turn, uh, close, the, close the browser just to, I think it, it should solve all the problem I have, right? What Is browser do you use? Um, I use Chrome. Okay, because Chrome persists session cookies. So session cookies will not go away when you close the browser. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Okay. Any other? Yeah. <laughs> so we have uh, an application where you have to e-sign things to approve. So you might log in through the corporate identity provider and use the Windows login. So you've already done Control Alt Delete. I'm logged into the domain. Everything's good. I'm right into the application. But now we have to e-sign to approve something, mm -hmm. whatever it may be, and they'll send. Force authn equals true in the SAML, mm -hmm. and unfortunately, with that Windows integrated authentication, it just says great, you're reauthenticated, and you're right back nice. into it. And there was no interactive e-sign, so we had to get creative with other parameters that are not really in the SAML specification. What but did you use? Um, other post parameters. Okay. So it's not in the SAML specification, but it's not specifically disallowed either. <laughs> right. So that kind of, it's not log out. As you said, it's kind of like log in again. Right. So that's yeah. my uh, confession. Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else? So I don't have a confession because I just reimage my machine every time I close down. But. <laughs> Light it on fire. I was going to say yeah. that, but that's a little bit more expensive. <laughs> um, but I had a question because you brought up the UX thing, and the UX aspect has actually been a big part of. I've had long debates with the UX team uh, about this, uh, and a lot of it stems back to terminology, right? How do you communicate this to the user? Because the logout, like it's like we were talking about the username passwords. That's an uh, that's from a the sign in and the username and password terminology is from the mainframe era and logout is from the same era as well. Right. So logout, sign out, the terminology is alien, so that's why, to the point, inconsistent experience also maps to inconsistent expectations on the users. What's your experience been in terms of discussions on terminology? That oh, might I think we should just have this. a button that says force reauthentication and users will know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think there is a good solution. I don't think anyone's found a good solution yet. Okay. 